Thank you. Further debate, the member for Ottawa Vanier. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to thank the member of Toronto Centre for tabling this important and thoughtful piece of legislation. As we progress toward a more inclusive society, we should remember that policy matters just as much as our intentions in daily life. The members shared stories, uh, and I've heard many of the same nature, I guess because of the time I spent with students and children as a mother of four and as a school trustee for 10 years. And uh, I need to say that I'm wholeheartedly supportive of this bill. Our expressions of support to LGBTQ plus community are essentially meaningless if we are not also working to ensure that their health care needs are met. There is an important link between access to gender affirmative health care and the well-being of transgender and non-binary people. When transgender and non-binary people are denied access to gender affirmative health care, they are being denied the right to self-actualize and express their identity. This can lead to serious mental health problem and distress, which is one reason that transgender people have vastly higher rates of mental illness and suicide attempts than the rest of the population. Gender affirmative health care includes top surgery, bottom surgery, puberty, blockers, hormone treatment, facial surgery, and various other medical treatments. Unfortunately, many doctors in Ontario are not properly trained in gender affirmative practices, which forces trans and non-binary people to become expert on their own health care. Many doctors have not, are not even aware that they can prescribe hormones. Only 52% of trans Canadians say that they have a primary care provider with whom they are comfortable discussing trans health care issues. Quebec has had a better track record of providing gender affirmative care than Ontario. This is larger because Quebec covers the cost of drugs, including hormone treatment. An important way to improve access to gender affirming health care is to remove financial barriers. One jurisdiction whose trans health care coverage surpasses that of both Quebec and Ontario is the Yukon. The Yukon has comprehensive coverage for trans health care and their plan is considered one of the best trans health care models in the world. I hope that the task force proposed by this legislation would consider the Yukon model and how we could imitate it in Ontario. As for current provision of care in Ontario, gender affirmative health care is much more accessible in urban areas than in rural areas. It is important that this task force consider how to lack the lack of availability of inclusive health care in rural areas can be addressed. While the primary reason for improving access and coverage of gender affirming health care is that it allows people to express their identity and improve their mental health, it can also improve the safety of trans people. Many transgender people said that they urgently need access to comprehensive health care, including surgeries and hormones, because it would allow them to pass more effectively as cisgender. Transgender and non-binary people are one of the most marginalized groups in our province and often face, viol face violence because of their gender identity. It is abhorrent that there are people who perpetuate this kind of hateful violence and allowing transgender people to complete their transitions could aid some people in avoiding violence. Of course, we should be striving to ensure that nobody faces discrimination because of their gender identity or the way they look. But improving gender affirmative health care would be a good short-term measure to keep transgender people safe. Establishing a task force to suggest improvements to gender affirmative care would be an excellent step toward improving the level of care available in Ontario. Mr. Speaker, trans rights are human rights, and I am happy to support this bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.